Panda bags are medical grade. Just never use a subway bag. I've had like four go right through. Oh, it's in the bag already. It's a girl. What's that big old vine coming out? She looks like one of them pumpkins in Cinderella. Greetings, Quahog 97 lovers. Do you have the guts to handle the truth? Today we're exposing 10 unbelievable things Meg did that will make your jaw drop. From getting married to having children, Meg has done it all. Watch this video with me and brace yourself for some wild surprises. Number 10, Meg gives birth. Bruce is feeling broody and tells Meg that he wants to be a daddy. Meg, who hasn't had a date since the last Ice Age, jumps at the chance to be Bruce and Jeffrey's surrogate, despite her parents' horror. Mom, Dad, I'm having Bruce and Jeffrey's baby. That's wonderful. What do you say we take this party to the top of the stairs? Top of the stairs. It's not an abortion. It's an oopsie. Meg soon found out that pregnancy was no picnic, and she started to annoy her family with her mood swings, cravings, and demands. Peter, Lois, Chris, and Stewie tried to cope with Meg's new situation, but they were very unsupportive and unhelpful. Well, team, I tried meth. All right, guys, looks like I'm really liking meth. Hey, guys, I need money. Like now. Like yesterday. Like now! Meg delivered a beautiful baby girl named Liza, making Bruce and Jeffrey ecstatic but terrified of being parents. Then Bruce and Jeffrey didn't show up to take their baby home, leaving the Griffin family stuck with her, much to Lois's dismay. But Liza soon charms everyone in the house with her cuteness, making Stewie green with envy. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Are you, are you almost done? Oh, yeah, no, sorry. I'm just, I'm doing sets. I'm just doing little sets. Oh, cool, cool. Guys, he's doing little sets. Cool, cool. Little sets. Cool, cool. When Bruce and Jeffrey eventually show up to visit their daughter, Lois calls them out on their seeming negligence before Bruce reveals that it was due to Meg constantly telling them to delay picking her up, not wanting to part with the first living thing that needs her. However, Liza's first words indicate a desire to be with her dads, giving them all the incentive they need to take her. If you're all alone, when the pretty birds have flown No! That can't be the first time our baby hears that album. Me. That's right. It should be at a jockstrap foam rave in Miami Beach, same as me. Number nine, married a Russian guy. Meg teams up with Brian to track down the jerk who hacked his Instagram account and posted embarrassing pictures of him. They follow the trail to Chelyabinsk, Russia. We're here to find the hacker that- Stole your Instagram, yes. Enjoy 10 square kilometer of country that don't make Geiger counter go beep, beep, beep. Hey! It's that way. They meet a shady hacker named Ivan, who has a thing for Meg's freakish body. Later, Meg decides to stay with Ivan because she likes being admired in a country where her weirdness is considered hot. When Ivan made love to me- Ah, uh, no, no, please, no, no, please no. Stop. He said, Meg Griffin. You have strong hunches like horse. How sweet is that? I'm an eight in Russia, Brian. I'm staying here. Brian and Stewie wonder how Meg is doing in her new home. She looks like she's having a blast, but deep down she craves the good old American staples, like burgers and the right to speak her mind. That's why she got into trouble when she posted a rebellious article on Instagram and got hit by a tranquilizer dart. Ivan, her secret admirer, had a close call with death and realized he couldn't bear to lose Meg. He popped the question and she said yes. They went to take some cheesy wedding photos and tied the knot. Which background do you want? Frozen tundra or leaky reactor? A, a reactor, reactor please. please. Don't know why I offered tundra. Nobody choose. But Meg felt blue after the wedding because her family didn't show up to celebrate with her. Yvonne suggests they go to America to say goodbye to them. As Meg walks away to call them, she hears Yvonne bragging to his friends that he only married her to get a green card and dump her in the US. Meg is furious and decides to get even with him. She grabs his phone and tweets some nasty things about Russia. Number eight, Joe's worst nightmare. Meg Griffin was the family scapegoat, but she was determined to prove her worth. When Lois asked her to check on Joe and Susie while she was out of town, Meg jumped at the chance. She did a great job and Joe was impressed. A little too impressed, in fact. 
Sorry I bit you yesterday. That's okay. I guess now I know not to get too close to your bowl, right? <laughs> well, yeah. I know you're not trying to hurt me, but part of me doesn't know. Meg started to develop a crush on Joe, and she didn't bother to hide it. She started calling him by his first name, wearing Bonnie's clothes, and talking about having children with him. Thanks. You're welcome, Joe. Ah, oh, I should have said something. He let me say it twice now. It's like we're married. This is Patrick Stewart. How are you liking the program so far? Joe was uncomfortable, but he didn't want to hurt Meg's feelings. Things get ugly when Meg sneaks Joe's gun into Bonnie's bag getting her busted at the airport while Meg pretends to be Joe's wife. We haven't made love in two weeks. You haven't made love ever. <laughs> oh, 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 God! This feels right, but it tastes like a dirty penny. Joe tells the Griffins that Meg has a crush on him. They laugh it off, but soon realize that Meg is nuts. They crack up, but soon realize that she is bonkers. Meg tried to win Joe back by throwing herself in front of his squad car and trying to become handicapped like him. Meg! What the hell did you do? I made us the same, Joe. We're exactly alike, you and I. Now we can be together. But Joe knew she was just being crazy. He set her straight, and Meg finally apologized to Bonnie. Number seven, fall for the homosexual man. Meg has a crush on Kent, a popular and gay guy but she doesn't know and still fantasizes about him. I think she's choking. Should we wake her up? No, she's got to learn to breathe out of her nose. She's getting it. She asks him out after her brush with death. He says yes, but only to meet her brother, Chris. Meg tries to smooch him and he rejects her and spills the beans that he's gay. She cries and tells Brian, who is trapped with her. He says Kent might be confused, Meg wants to change him and make him love her. Kind of, yeah. Well, guess what? That's my back! Hook up with me! Come on! We can make this work! Just stick your head in here and pretend it's a butt! No, Meg, stop it! The next day, she sees Kent talking to Chris and gets jealous. She comes up with a crazy plan to make Kent sleep with Chris and then tell her all the details so she can pretend it was her. She hopes Kent will tell her how it was. She asks Chris for help, but he refuses. She gets roofies from Quagmire and makes Kool-Aid. Listen, good luck with everything, and uh, call me if you get arrested. I will. Thanks. That's what it's all about, Glenn. Don't rape it back, rape it forward. She invites Chris over. He gives her a nice photo of them as kids. She feels bad and pours the Kool-Aid on a plant, which gets molested by another plant. When Kent sneaks into Chris's room, he finds him awake and not interested. Chris calls Meg and she confesses her plan. Kent gets mad and leaves. Not a drum roll for nothing. What's this? Ooh, candy! Number six, Meg fell in love with Santa. Meg gets horny for Santa after a jolly ride on his lap at the mall. She can't stop thinking about his white beard and red suit and how he made her feel like Jimmy Connors in his prime. Meg, what are you doing? You look like mom when she sits on the washing machine. Now, what would you like for Christmas, little boy? Shut up, everyone! Shut up! Shut up! Just shut up! She tries to tell Lois that she has a crush on a boy, but Lois knows better. Stewie is traumatized by Meg's moaning. He tells Brian everything. Meg drags Stewie back to the mall to get another dose of Santa's magic, but she finds out that Peter has taken over the job. She freaks out and runs away, leaving Peter confused and Stewie scarred for life. Come on, we've got to visit Santa at another mall. I can't go back to Santa, man. I can't. Hello again? Hi. That's the guy that was peeing in the women's bathroom. She tracks down her Santa at another mall, but he turns out to be an imposter. She screams at him and gets kicked out of the mall by security. I need to find him. He made me a woman. Where is he? <laughs> He's a phony, a great big phony. She confesses to her parents that she's obsessed with Santa, and Lois tries to calm her down. But Meg won't give up on her quest for Santa's sack. She goes from mall to mall, looking for her Santa, but she can't find him anywhere. On Christmas Eve, she's desperate and lonely. 
Just then, the real Santa shows up and gives her some words of wisdom. There's a bench right over there. Quick, let me sit on your leg. No, that's not what I'm here for. Yes, it is. Now sit down. Meg, no. Meg, no. Get off. Peace. He tells her that he's proud of her for being so adventurous and that she'll find someone who makes her happy someday. He leaves in a beat-up car, and Meg wonders if he was really Santa or just a homeless guy with a beard. Number five, Meg's blindness. Meg is so desperate for a date that she ends up at the bowling alley where she meets Bruce, a fabulous gay man who works there. Hey, hey, it's the Megalodon. Bruce almighty, what it look like, boy? She thinks he's straight and he thinks she's a drag queen. So they hit it off and go out for a bite. Meg is over the moon when she brings him home as her new boyfriend, but her family is not fooled by his rainbow colored flags. Hey, Boo, we should probably get going. Where are you two lovebirds off to? The waxing place. Bruce is getting a treatment. I'm just getting an estimate from my team. Oh, gross. They try to tell Meg the truth, but she's too blind to see it. Bruce's parents pressure him to marry Meg, and he pops the question. Meg says yes. Lois is particularly distressed. Are engaged? What? Engaged? No daughter of mine is getting married at 18. I forbid it. Forbidden! Following a dinner with Bruce's parents, Lois is willing to allow Meg to proceed. Meg finally comes to her senses and realizes that Bruce is gay. She helps him reunite with his true love, Jeffrey, who dumped him for being in the closet. Bruce's parents are shocked by their son's sexuality, but he stands up to them and declares his pride. Bruce and Jeffrey get married in a Walgreens parking lot because the priest won't do it. Who's gonna marry them? By the power vested in me, I pronounce you husband and husband. You may kiss when you get home. Well, we just lost the prize. Number four, the nursing home robbers. Meg has to do community service at a nursing home where the seniors are rude and stinky. She gets bored and decides to swipe a sparkly brooch from a nagging old hag who annoys her. <gasps> Ooh, I should text this to my best friend. Sick brooch. Adam, are you done with that mayor homework yet? It's called a bill, Mom. She feels a thrill and a joy until Chris comes along and spoils everything. He threatens to rat Meg out unless she lets him join her heist, and they start pilfering the oldies like there's no tomorrow. They find a clueless old dude who believes she's dead, and they take all her stuff. Oh, hi. You died, and I'm here to take you to heaven. Um, upsy daisy here we go. Well, now that I'm in heaven... They live like royalty in their room, surrounded by their booty, until they start feeling remorseful and scared. They realize they've been naughty kids, and they try to fix their mistake by giving the stuff back. But as they try to bring it back, they are caught and forced to spend more time attending to the residents in order to keep them from calling the police. Sit down. Now I feel some dementia coming. Feed me pudding while I grip your wrist in terror. This isn't my house. Number three, the body that went missing. Meg lands a job at a funeral home after she shows no fear of dead bodies. She was happy to give up her boring old job. And I'm getting kind of tired of my old job. Only a half a point divides our top two competitors as we enter the last event, the Meg Roll. Chris tags along and messes with the corpses to Meg's dismay. When she goes to dress a body, she finds it gone and blames Chris for stealing it. Where is it? And don't try to act like you don't know what I'm talking about. Fine, you caught me. So I borrowed your bra. My boobs hurt when I go down the stairs. Chris confesses that he used it as a fake ID to get into adult movies and pool parties until it fell apart and he flushed it down the toilet. Meg freaks out and tells him they need a body to show. During the funeral, Chris pretends to be the body despite having itchy balls, which Meg scratches for him. Just uh, straightening out his pants a little. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's good. Scratch it. Scratch it. Oh, thank you. As they go on, they discover that the dead guy's face was donated for a face transplant and Chris loses his, telling Meg that even though he can't frown, he is miserable. Number two, Meg's obsession with Brian. Meg is so desperate for a date that she threatens to kill herself if she can't go to the prom. Brian takes pity on her and agrees to be her date. How do I look, Brian? Ah, uh, you sure do, Meg. 
FYI, the carpet matches the drapes in color and quantity. You ever seen a blacksmith's apron? He regrets it as soon as he gets there. He drowns his sorrows in booze, but he also stands up for Meg when Connie insults her. He tells Connie that she's a slut who peaked at 12 and that even her stepdad wouldn't touch her now. Then he makes out with Meg, but he pukes right after and blames it on the alcohol. Sorry, that was the booze, not you. You gonna eat that? Meg thinks Brian is her boyfriend now, but Brian tells her he's not interested. Meg goes crazy and tries to seduce Brian in creepy ways. Brian tells Lois what he did, and she gets mad at him. This is even worse than when you ate that bubblegum out of the garbage. Brian, did you get into the garbage last night? Uh, no. Why? Don't lie to me, Brian. I'm not lying. <laughs> She tells him to fix things with Meg, but Meg won't take no for an answer. She knocks Brian out with dog food, ties him up and takes him to a hotel to have sex with him. But Peter and his buddies save him in the nick of time. Holy crap, what the hell is this? Brian, she's a teenager! Yeah, Brian, you're doing the same thing that Mia Farrow did to that Chinaman that Woody Allen brought home from the circus. Number one, kidney for love. Meg goes on a date with a guy from the internet who says she's hotter than her picture. Wow, you look just like your picture. You don't look anything like yours. Yeah, that's a candid from a summer job I had. Well, you're much prettier in person. On their date, Meg finds out they have a lot in common. But he has a dark secret. He's a kidney snatcher. He drugs Meg and takes her to a sleazy motel where he cuts out one of her organs. Meg wakes up and finds out what he did. She is shocked and hurt. Sorry, it's my first day on this job. Well, where did you work before? Circuit City. So I haven't worked in like two years. But she's still into him and wants to spend the day with him. They go on a romantic adventure. At the end of the day, he surprises her with a gift, her own kidney. She realizes he's the one and gives him a kiss. Oh, Toby, I love it. Thank you. Oh, this has been the best Valentine's Day ever. If you liked this video, don't miss these other hilarious clips from Quahog97. Click the subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified of our newest videos.